Welcome to Glib Shark, the podcasting madness of three people and the shark of their dreams. Our hosts include Jack Jenga Ship Edithel, Lauren Obo Crazy Urban, and Jonathan Roadblock Cerna. Dive in as they chat with interesting people across the internet and generally talk about really geeky things. Be a chum and join us, won't you? It's time for Glib Shark. Sound levels are good. <laughs> Sound levels are great. <laughs> <laughs> it's wah, not nearly wah. as good as uh, as uh, Brandon's uh, Mickey Mouse, which is oh no, <laughs> like I just escaped that. Like it's a good was, thing none of us can so do like a proud like about a that Mouse. because he was just on Rooster Speak chatting with people, and I could hear him from the living room. In the office with the door shut, making the Mickey Mouse voices. And like, what's even worse is that he's learned how to do Minnie Mouse's voice somehow. And so he's like alternating between these two voices like a freaking schizophrenic or, you know, multiple dis- personality disorder person. And, and I'm like, I have to go in there and be like, no, you have to stop. Like, stop that. And then he got us like Mickey Mouse wrapping paper to add pain to it. I'm like, I can't, I can't escape this. The troll is strong with this one. Yeah. I, I wouldn't worry too much and until very he starts dre- Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much until he starts dressing in half mini, half Mickey cosplay. Then the line must be <gasps> He has a mm-hmm. Mickey Mouse glove. Okay. Tucked then, away in a drawer. Oh, we, wow. And- it's, uh, <laughs> you may need to act more quickly. And a Michael Jackson on the other hand. <laughs> I, I might be revealing a little more about my boyfriend than I probably should, actually. <laughs> Things just got weird. Yeah, the weird <laughs> portion of the podcast. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jack. I'm Jonathan. I'm Lauren. And I'm we Lauren. are... <laughs> <laughs> and we are Glib Shark. Tonight we have uh, the talented artist Lauren Crozier on the show. We're going to get to her in just a teensy bit. But first, as always, we have love talented oboe crazy whose real name we will not be using for the duration of the show for obvious <laughs> reasons here to do a little something that we call this week in geek how are you oboe i'm doing great jenga i'm only going to talk about one thing because i unfortunately can only stick around for right at the beginning and then i have to run away and work but this one thing is pretty darn awesome especially in light of what's been going on in gaming culture with and uh women in gaming in media in science and everything it's nice to know that not only uh have other people recognized the awesome people have On last Friday, a digitized trove of Albert Einstein's writings and correspondence was made available online. While pursuing the collection, astrobiologist David Grinspoon found a letter addressed from Einstein to Marie Curie. That's right, the famed physicist, chemist, and two-time Nobel laureate. What's the purpose of the letter? It's basically to say, ignore the trolls. It's just amazing. So here's a a portion of the letter translated, originally dated November 23rd, 1911, from Albert Einstein. Quote, highly esteemed Miss Curie, do not laugh at me for writing you without having anything sensible to say, but I am so enraged by the base manner in which the public is presently daring to concern itself with you that I absolutely must give vent to this feeling. However, I am convinced that you consistently despise this rabble, whether it... This is what I get for reading something from someone smarter than me. Um, Whether it... Bequitiously lavishes respect on you or whether it attempts to satiate its lust for sensationalism. I am impelled to tell you how much I've come to admire your intellect, your drive, and your honesty, and that I consider myself lucky to have made your personal acquaintance in Brussels. Anyone who does not number among these reptiles is certainly happy, now as before, that we have such personages among us as you, real people with whom one feels privileged to be in contact. If the rabble continues to occupy itself with you, then simply don't read that hogwash, but rather leave it to the reptile for whom it has been fabricated. Yours truly, A. Einstein. That's right. Years. Awesome. Albert Einstein told Mary. 
don't read the comments. So I implore you. Someone is being a hater on you, and if they're good, take the wise words of Albert Einstein and don't listen to those reptiles. That's all for this week in Geek. I'm Oba Crazy, and I just wanted to make sure that Lauren had an opening act because she deserves one. Aw, well, thank you. I'm glad you jumped in. I'm sad you can't be here for the whole podcast. I wish I could. I'll just have to listen to it later. But sadly, uh, Mary Poppins calls because it's Mary Poppins. Because the rest I have to go play a Christmas gig. So sometimes I have to work a day job. So have a fun show and bye. Bye. Bye, Obo. So in (laughs) case you didn't know it, the world is indeed a strange place. If you have a fact you want read live and on the air, say, for instance, Albert Einstein telling Walt Disney to stay at it, or or better yet, Lucy... Lucille Ball. That'd be kind of cool. You'd be like, you make with a funny. You're pretty cool. <laughs> you can send it to Lauren at obocrazy.com. And while you're at it, go to glibshark.com, full of past episodes of Modern Glib Shark, Ancient Jenga Jam, Middling, Buttcast, and all kinds of pictures and essays and fun stuff. Glibshark.com, where all the cool kitties want to go. Uh, but our guest is, is waiting here patiently. Uh, we evolved we avoid a multi Lauren situation, but uh, Lauren Crozier, <laughs> artist behind Drunk Crucible, friend of the show, friend of us, welcome to Globeshark. Thank you. Thanks for having me tonight. I'm super excited. We're we're jazzed too. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons why I uh, I wanted Lauren to come on is uh, actually I had met Lauren at RTX uh, this last summer. And it was just kind of a passing meeting. It was just like, hey, I'm Roblox. She's like, hey, I'm Lauren. And, uh, and she's going out with, uh, with a guy named Noobs, who is a really good friend of mine. And so I, I know Noobs. I talked to him on the, uh, on the Rooster Speak uh, server and, and at various PAXs and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, but I'd never really known Lauren until we started playing Destiny. <laughs> And, oh, Destiny. Uh, oh God! And uh, <laughs> it was it was a couple of Saturday Crucible matches where we we actually started talking and um, and we were rolling with some of the other Rooster Speak kids like Lammy and Traver, obviously Noobs and and a bunch of those guys. And uh, and we, uh, you know, Lauren and I, we we ended up talking. Uh, she ended up drawing me a couple of times, and one of our other friends of the show, Connor, uh, and started hashtagging it as drunk crucible uh because when we play crucible we tend to drink and uh and <laughs> that's, that's how it, that's how it started out anyway yeah <laughs> largely <laughs> but uh so ha- i mean I, I i have a pretty good idea of this because of uh of the amount you know of of time we've spent in destiny but uh but how are you liking liking destiny the game and we'll get to your art here in just a second but first video games then art. <laughs> yes absolutely and i i love destiny i loved it since the beginning um i played the beta and and like was hooked right away i and yeah like i agree with everything like the general consensus that the story kind of blows but there is something so addictive about this game and i still think that must be like a mystery to people but they're like I don't know what it is. I'm just hooked on this game and it's redundant, but it's at the same time it's gorgeous. Everything about it is totally appealing visually. The audio is perfect, the um the functionality um and like the connectivity with other players. I've I've never played anything on that scale before. I never got into like World of Warcraft or any other MMO type thing. So this was the first experience for that um, for me. And it was it was kind of cool because usually I'm not that much of a social gamer, but this just kind of like warmed me up to that. Um, and yeah, I, I just find it to be a really relaxing and immersive game. Um, but I don't know. I I've always loved first person shooters too. Um, there's something kind of disturbingly relaxing about going and just like popping heads off of enemies really easily (laughs) (laughs) and and it comes easy to lauren for those who don't know i mean she is a straight killer in uh 
in PvP. I've seen her just murder straight up murder dudes all over the place. Uh, <laughs> it and like like we've said, it inspired a few uh, drunk crucible comics. But uh, I think one of the one of the best things that we did recently was uh, we took you and Brandon and a couple other people on the raid. Yeah, and um, undeniably frustrating the first go around, and I. I think we've only done it twice now with you guys, maybe two or three times. Probably I think just twice, two. Yeah. yeah, but and what we're still kind of squishy in in the raid, but uh getting the hang of it pretty quickly each time. And I I personally totally dig it. Um I d- we're also really lucky that we had you guys to go through with it um for our first time because we couldn't imagine having People sit there for like 10 hours just figuring out exactly where to go. But yeah, I, I love it. It's definitely a really unique bonding experience. Um, and I, I imagine if you do it even with people that you're not friends with, that they're complete strangers, you would you either will learn to jive really quickly and how to work efficiently pretty quickly, or you're just going to fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Luckily, I've, I've each time I played, it's been with you and like other people that I've known, so we haven't had that happen yet. I think you were you were calling out the story on Destiny, and that's a very very good thing to to kind of bring put a lantern on and say, hey, this is kind of lacking. But I think one of the things about the game, that social aspect you were talking about, what is the fact that you kind of make your own stories, and I think Drunk Crucible is a is a great example of that through your comic. The kind of the stories of our group ha- have been told. I mean, up on the stream right now is an anecdote from in the raid when uh, when you were standing behind me and you had a rocket launcher and then you fired the rocket launcher and then you died. <laughs> and it's I, I mean, for as much as the as the game's narrative uh, leaves something to be desired, I think the stories that players are making uh, for themselves and, and st- things that you have helped bring to life is, is really uh, what makes this game special. Thanks. Yeah, and um, yeah, I, I think it, it takes like a special group of people to be able to sort of fill that gap, that void that the story leaves for you, um, assumingly unintentionally leaves for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> assumingly. Well, well, I yeah, know. I mean, I, I imagine there are some people who just hit up Destiny every day because they're really goal-driven. Um, but, um, yeah, I just lucked out by having some good friends who love laughing and have a good time playing with it. I think that's that's one of the reasons why I in, particularly enjoy playing with you, Roadblock, and, and uh, like Connor and Shaver because you guys laugh easily at shit that goes down in in like our endeavors and destiny. Um, whereas I, I I know some people who would get really frustrated just because of like KD ratio. But but here with us it's just like, oh that that was pretty funny or like whoops, that was dumb and funny, you know? <laughs> I, I think it it you just kind of you kind of have to laugh at it sometimes. I mean, yeah. there there are there have been times where I have been been very frustrated, and and some of my friends know that uh, that you know I may I may kind of like go go at it a little bit and get a little loud sometimes. But what uh, you no yeah never, never but <laughs> but uh, some of our friends have pointed out that the times that they know I'm I'm actually like legit angry is when I'm not saying a thing. And they're like, "Oh God, that's that's not good. <laughs> that's not good." Oh, <laughs> um, like but, I, I remember a couple instances where you were pretty quiet. And now I'm like, <laughs> "Oh man, he was pissed." <laughs> and but at the same time, I mean, especially on stuff where it is stressful, and and looking at the the new raid that just came out today, I'm I'm like, "Oh, oh, this is not yeah. going to be good." Oh, this part. <laughs> There, there's uh, spoilers for those who who may care, but there's a part on the in the new raid where every single team member has to handle a sword in order and kill an enemy. So everyone, pretty much, you can't like carry someone. I mean, with the previous raid, if someone didn't really want to run the oracle or or the relic, I'm sorry, 
they didn't. And, uh, and it was very rare that you would have someone forced in that situation. Well, in the new raid, there is a part where every single person ha- pretty much has to solo an enemy with a sword by themselves and, and also complete, like get over an, uh, an obstacle. So it's like I, I can definitely see some frustration there going forward. But at the same time, I mean, from what I've seen in the new stuff, it looks pretty cool. Uh, what have you done in uh, well, this? This will be the last Jack. I'm sorry. This will be the last Destiny part or maybe the last Destiny part. But um, the, the last part about Destiny, the game, hopefully. But uh, what have you seen and, and what have you liked about the new stuff that is that has dropped today? I only just got into it. Uh, like maybe 40 minutes before we hopped on here, but I was able to get through, I think, the first two missions or um, quests handed to you by Eris, I I think her name is, Um, the new bounty chick that's part of the the DLC. But um, I got through the first two quests, and it's interesting. I mean, it's basically in the same areas that you were in in old Russia and, and it, it seems that it's going to spin out to other worlds too um, but it's I don't know it's cool it's when I first landed in the first quest I thought I was in a totally different place and um, turns out I was just I was still in Russia and like part of the original content but in a different section of the original content if that makes sense so I was a little yeah, disoriented yeah. But it was, I don't know, it looks pretty cool, and I'm, I'm pretty excited to keep pushing forward. I don't know when I'll be ready for the raid, because I'm still only level 28. But, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited to uh, go through this journey and the, the new uh, weapons and bounties that dropped with it, <laughs> with it are uh, pretty cool sounding and looking. Yeah, I actually got, uh, for completing the new story missions, you get a, a new high fusion rifle that's both solar and arc you can switch it and it's it's a lot of fun it's it's a fun little gun so i can't wait to uh to play with it more but um but so let's let's kind of move the conversation over to to some of the some of the art that you do and 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 kind of transition it uh, talk about this thing a little bit but kind of transition it into stuff like the uh the the rooster teeth podcast and stuff like that i mean i think one of the the impressions that I got when when I first when I first sort of saw you work when we first started playing was that you work really fast. Yeah. Like uh, just for people know, there are breaks in between some of the activities in Destiny where you're in orbit or you're falling to orbit, and there would be times when we'd be sitting there in orbit, and then Lauren be like, "Hey, I just tweeted out the sketch," and boom, it's a sketch of like what just happened, like last match or last mission or whatever. And we're like, what? You did that while we were in orbit. That's weird and cool. Wow. <laughs> so like, yeah. how, how do you get the, that kind of expressiveness that quickly? I mean, if you, if you see some of the stuff that you call unfinished or, or, or whatever, I mean, it's still the facial expressions are just phenomenal. I mean, how do you capture that so quickly? <laughs> Um, I think, I honestly think it's just from practicing so much when I was in college and leading up to college because I, I really wanted to be a traditional animator. I wanted to animate by hand and, um, you know, I I would study a lot of really great classical animators from Disney and one of them was Glenn Keane. And if you talk to any animator in the industry, they'll probably, if you say Glenn Keane, they'll probably be like, oh, Glenn Keane. Yeah, um, he he did characters like uh, from Treasure Planet. He did Captain Silver, I think was his name. Um, he designed a lot of the characters in Rapunzel, um, Tarzan. So he was like the master of facial expressions. Like he could do the most subtle expression, and it's like not much of a change, but you're like. Oh, I feel that. That's crazy. So I studied him and it's, it was, um, a lot of like subtlety in how you portray eyes and eyebrows actually. Like that's it. It's like just an eyebrows, um, in characters. So, but, but like back to the base of things, it was from studying animation. So I had to study like 
gestures, expressions, which also translate into gestures, um, and then also drawing very quickly because you want to have a high production rate when you're an animator. So in, 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 in any in any studio, um, you want to be able to produce artwork pretty quickly. So that's one of the first things I learned when I started to get more serious about drawing and artwork was producing quickly and um, just drawing faster, even if it wasn't the most refined piece, just to uh, get an idea out there. So like a lot of my rough sketches for like Drunk Crucible, I don't care about they're like done in five minutes or less but it's enough to like get an idea out for at least myself and people who know the topic so yeah it was just a lot of practice and animation background that helped with that i think wow i just looked up to glenn green on uh, wikipedia i didn't realize he was the son of bill keen from family circus oh yeah yeah and i think now his daughter is a. Uh... Like, I think she's a concept artist in the industry, in Disney, I think. Oh, wow. So it's like a three generations of uh, cartoonists. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Glenn Keane retired not too long ago, a couple years ago, I think, from Disney. He was animating for a long time. It's sort of like the Dystress, except uh, one of them didn't get dumped by uh, Chris Hardwick. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we lost Jack. Oh, my God. That joke was so bad. It kicked Jack out of the oh conversation. My God. Wow. That's a first. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Chloe Dykstra, that your your love life didn't quite work out. He's like, I'm sorry I singled okay, you out. Okay, last job. Fuck this. I'm out. Peace. <laughs> but uh, so kind of like I – all of your stuff so far has just been has just been amazing, and uh, I know from some of the work that I saw saw really early on with stuff having to do with the uh, with the Rooster Teeth podcast and you kind of animating some of their anecdotes. And I know there's one of like pissed off Miles as a Dilaposaur or something, whatever the yeah. the frilly one from uh, from Jurassic Park, which is just just exceptional exquisite piece <laughs> uh wh what kind of motivated you to to uh to to start doing that and putting those out there in uh and uh in the twitterverse there um you mean like the start of rt podcast drawings and yeah general? yeah god it must have been a couple years ago um my boyfriend at the time got me into the company and I, I was unemployed at the same time as well. So I had a lot of time to just like sit at home and draw and then like do job search on the side and it got really lonely. So I would pop on the RT podcast to have as background noise and like kind of keep my sanity. And I would notice from the recordings that they would talk about content and like Bernie, for instance, would be on his laptop looking, looking at things and like retweeting things simultaneously and I'm like oh so he's monitoring a, a, a stream like a live stream and I was new to like Twitter at the same time so one night one Monday night I tuned into the podcast and like had a Bernie drawing ready to go and um he as <laughs> it's kind of funny I would like watch him as soon as Bernie looked down at his laptop screen I would like push out the drawing and hope that he would catch it on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> we have Bernie's son. I repeat, we have Bernie's son. <laughs> <laughs> so it actually, I think it actually worked because he did, I did push out one drawing and it's still in my Rooster Teeth profile page, like way back. Um, I pushed it out and he favored it and retweeted it. And I did it again the next week and he faved it, retweeted it and then followed me. And then I just kept doing it. And, um, there were some times where it fell into a lull and then actually just over the past couple of months, I think, uh, like Gus started to notice it more as I, I was like pretty consistent pushing out a drawing. And so Gus, who actively monitors the stream, kept showing them, which surprised me because it was like, 
like these half-ass doodles and I'm like what in the middle of them I was literally like why am I even bothering you know like this is just poop and and then it would get out there and I'd be like what and so uh, that was kind of motivating to just keep going you know um uh, like undeniably it was like that's cool maybe it'll happen again and so I kept doing it and then also alongside of getting them pushed onto the stream, which is freaking awesome, um, a lot of other people started to associate my drawings with the podcast and, like, vice versa. So I'm like, okay, well, I really enjoy doing these things and, like, looking for quick quips to push out really quickly. Um, so I'm just going to keep doing it, and I'll make that my thing. So it, it like... There was some lulls here and there between like when I first started and then where I am right now with it. But pretty quickly, like thanks to people's interest, I I just like decided this is gonna be my thing, you know. And it's it's a really good thing. Like I I know that uh that it's one of the things I look forward to. I, I on, normally on Monday nights, especially these days, I'm playing Destiny or I'm doing something else where I can't sit down and, and listen to the podcast. But I, in, inevitably, at some point, I'll see your stuff on Twitter and I'll kind of get a handle of of what was going on. And and I, I love the takes that you have on on some of the ridiculous shit that gets said on that show, which is. <laughs> which which enriches it and 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 makes it better. So it's it's definitely almost a uh, podcast by proxy, at least for me. Oh, that's that's nice to hear. And like a side note, I'm not sure how you can piece together the weird shit that's going on because sometimes it's really weird shit. Like the Miles picture, for instance. It's like, what the fuck was happening? You know, like it's Miles with like these dinosaur fans on his neck. Like if I if I saw that without context, I would be like what (laughs) um but that's that's really nice to hear too and I think a lot of people I've noticed a lot of people saying like oh this adds a lot to it for for like from their personal standpoint um Jordan from Rooster Teeth when he I think it was soon after they pushed out that um What's their new thing? It's it's like alongside RTAA and it's fairly new. It's like with the Minecraft. Oh, it's the uh, Minecraft Adventures. <clears throat> yeah. So soon after that, I think Jordan posted a journal, and like one thing he said in that really captured my attention, and it was, "We take funny moments and make them funnier." And I'm like, "That's that's it. Like that is." That is it. And so that's been sort of like, I took that and sort of made it my mantra whenever I think about like the RT podcast drawings and everything like that. It's it's not just redrawing something from the podcast anymore. It's like taking it to that next step. And like even just illustrating it kind of takes it to that next step for some people. But like adding a little more punch to it um, and that could that could vary just, just adds – to the whole experience for some people, I think. Including us. <laughs> yeah. that number. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, I was looking at some of the, uh, the drawings and I'm impressed by like the economy of line, how you're able to convey a lot without using a whole lot in the way of, uh, I guess, I mean, I, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but do you get my idea? I, I think so. You mean like, um, not what? like just being able to convey a lot through line alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think honestly, that's also thanks to studying a lot of traditional animation because they do a lot of that. And again, like Glenn Keane, freaking Glenn Keane, did that too. If you go, I mean, just go Google Glenn Keane sketches, and they are like the most rich drawings you'll ever see. Like you don't want to see finished drawings; you want to see his sketches. So it's um. Again, in part of practicing like gesture and just line work in general, making thing, making sure things flow really nicely, just as lines alone and like the silhouette of an image is solid. I guess it, it's really it's like things you wouldn't normally think about, but it makes a huge difference. Yeah. There was actually an Adult Swim bumper that was like. It mentions something along those lines. It's like you know a character design is solid if you can recognize it in silhouette. 
And then it had the three characters from Futurama in yep. silhouette. And it's like, yep, I know yep. exactly who they are. That's like that's like animation and character design 101 is silhouette. Making sure that like the character design, you can identify each character by their silhouette. Like if they were all blacked out and all you could see is their solid shape, you know who is who still. And then also that that also applies to poses. Like a dynamic pose, you have to understand that like you have to keep in mind if this person was in silhouette would you still be able to understand what they were doing? Like, are they holding a weapon or are they masturbating? Like some, <laughs> sometimes like inexperienced artists and it's like a common issue is they just don't think about that. And so sometimes their silhouette is a little sloppy and it's just not as dynamic as it could be. Is that a knife or a dick? Yeah, exactly. Huh. That, well... It happens. <laughs> I was actually thinking about some one of the uh, the Drunk Crucible compilation that you sent me, where it was just like a series of different sketches, like Brandon's drinking, I'm deciding over weapons. You've got your you've got your cloak and knife on as your blade dancer, and I, I was thinking that like uh, that was the pose that I thought of when you were talking about posing was your blade dancer pose, and how it's like even though you're just you're you're not really saying a whole lot in that sketch, your your pose is actually saying saying a lot and and yeah. that's one of the things that's really cool and again the fact that you just pump that stuff out is just amazing uh, just oh my god <laughs> i can't even thanks no like those sketches too are done at work and my work is like so mediocre it's, it's like i work at a laundry parts distribution warehouse and i'm like this is the most mundane job i've, I've ever worked like a, besides insurance company and and so it's like very blue collar. So on the side, I'm like, I have to draw. Like, I can't stop. I have to draw. So I have like notepads full of like three minute quick jotted down sketches. And like, I, I don't know. It, it, they're like, they come out awesome. They're fun and like loose. Um, but there's like a lot of hasty anxiety pushing them out behind that. <laughs> The the one and uh, and I didn't get it up on the stream here, but I'll I'll put it. I, I'm trying to get as many of these episodes, and and this one's definitely going into the uh, into the YouTube hopper. Uh, so I'll put it. I'll I'll put this particular sketch that I'm about to talk about in there. But it's the one you did today of uh, of our drunk crucible characters uh, doodle in the block where I'm giving you a piggyback ride. Yeah, and uh, that one like uh, your your drawings already have an effect on me i mean very clearly but that one was just like oh <laughs> that one was just so cute because it's like like i can imagine our our drunk crucible characters you know having been through the stuff that they've been through and just be having a little moment like that like doodles hopping on the back of block and saying give me a piggyback ride and block is yeah. like oh okay sure <laughs> oh yeah i mean that Again, that's like another thing that Destiny leaves open to me, at least, is that it's like it's so serious, and you don't really get to see your guardian a whole lot without their helmets on, <clears throat> and there's little to no expression. But you know, like if you're in a party, and I like to think about this whenever we're in a party, and that's kind of like what started Drunk Crucible is that like who else is just like drunk and dicking around and like. The, their guardians don't show it, but behind scenes, they're, like, cracking up at some, I don't know, like, a dick joke or something, and they're, like, drinking beer. And so that that's also kind of, like, what started the whole scenes of them going, that, like, the first one was, uh, like, my, my character and Connor at a bar, and then they go into, into like, Crucible and fight, but they're drunk, and that's kind of how I like to keep it, is that, like... These characters are really straight faced in the game, but actually they they could have a lot of personality to them. And I just I love having that liberty to do that. <clears throat> and uh, I, I I think one of the things that your your art kind of kind of extends to, and it's something that you that we got a little taste of thanks to the weather up in Minnesota was but your uh your flash commissions <laughs> and that you kind of randomly do for people. And I have a couple of the ones that I think you did for uh, Mr. Fusion and Lo Zelda up on the stream right now. 
But actually, and this is going back to me, you know, us kind of starting to, you know, hang out and talk. But, and I didn't realize this initially, but one of my favorite portraits of one of my friends is, uh, is a picture of Jackie, uh, the art forum mod, now a side admin. And, uh, and, and Noobs is a, is a new mod now. So congrats to him. Yay. Yay, Noobs. Yay. But, uh, but uh, it's one of Jackie with her band hammer. And it looks like she's casting a spell, but it's just like less than five. So she's getting ready to lay the smack down. <laughs> I did not until recently realize that that was you, that, that you had drawn that. Oh, and that's God. one of my favorites ever. <laughs> Really? That was ages ago, too. And, and it's like, I, I know whenever, uh, whenever I think about Jackie getting ready to put, put the beat down on someone who violated the five post rule, I always think of that picture. <laughs> like, that's the one I go to. That's awesome. Yeah, I love having exaggerated weapons and, like, petite girls. I think that's a common theme, too. But, yeah, like, huge band hammer. Jackie's probably, like, oh, no, you come here, you know what you're about to get, you know, that sort of gesture and expression. <laughs> but I'm glad that things like that kind of leave a lasting impression on people. I mean, that's an old drawing, too, and I didn't realize, like, I've forgotten about it. I didn't realize that to at least one other person it left, you know, a lasting impression, which is really cool to me. Sometimes it's like that. Like every now and again, I'll get someone tell me about an episode of Jenga Jam where they'll mention something and I'll completely forget what it was. But we don't know what it is that we do that's going to, you know, impact other people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's because to me, I, I don't have a lot of emotional attachment to my drawings because, like in school, you, that was one thing you just can't afford to have that attachment because it could change uh, down the line from others feedback, especially if you're in like a production pipeline. So sure. you don't get attached to your stuff. So whenever I push stuff out, it's like in the moment I'll, I'll push it out. And if there's, if there's like no story behind it, like with drunk crucible, then I'm like, eh, whatever it's out there. I don't, I don't give a shit. Like I would give a shit if someone wants to copy it, and claim it as their own that's a whole nother story but otherwise it's it's like it's out there it's done next thing you know yeah. you're talking about a production environment and you actually posted something uh very exciting uh, uh i think it was last week you actually got to design a shirt for rooster teeth yeah that was super fun like and it, yeah i mean like my journal i i'm already like Ah, oh, I'm speechless, but the journal kind of said it all. I was really stoked to get to have John reach out to me and ask if I wanted to design this shirt in particular. Um, and he didn't even ask if I wanted, like, I didn't even know what I was going to design. I was just like, yep, I want to design something. And, and it turned out to be the RT podcast quotes shirt version two. And I, like... I don't go, I'm not someone who goes back right now and listens to all the podcasts, but it was like so integral to a lot of my artistic development over time. And of course, like the RT podcast sketches that I do that I was like, yes, I want to do this. This is so cool. And I love the first shirt. Um, There's something so simple and, and fun about it that it just, cl just clicked with me. So yeah, I was really excited to do that. And um, the whole process of Coming up, coming up with a rough design and then sending it to John and then getting initial feedback, making changes, sending it back and then getting more feedback and then resulting in the final form was uh, like it, that part of the process would probably be tedious to some. But I find it really exciting because you get to see like one idea transform into something pretty solid and really cool at the end product and, and like really quickly too. Like that was done within a week. That was done within like four days, I think. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I hear the, on the opposite end, like of artists. I mean, I'm, I don't know if you read comics or not, but I've always had, I actually read like on a regular basis. Like all these books get delayed because, you know, these artists would take time and you know, they do amazing work, but there are other guys like John Romita Jr. who were doing amazing work and they'd be able to put out a monthly comic or maybe two, you know, in a, in a month. Yeah. And I, 
I honestly don't read a lot of comics, and I, comics is like an art form that's a little. It's like it's still drawing and similar styles, but I don't know. I'm not familiar with the production process for that because I think it differs between each person and each company. You know, like some people take their time producing that, and some companies need like a high demand for you know more issues out. And I, I'm just guessing. Like I'm pulling stuff out of my ass. I'm just guessing. Um, it's fine. This is something we do a lot on the show. <laughs> it's guessing. in the name. <laughs> <laughs> it's our it's our show's first name is exactly what we're doing. Uh, my educated guess is this. <laughs> so, I'm going to speak broadly about this subject that I know very little about, but yeah. <laughs> I've got an opinion, dang it. Uh, I'm going to speak confidently about it, and you're going to believe me. Um, uh, no, yeah, it's... I imagine, uh, like with books, for instance, it might be a different scenario. Like it's an illustrator being commissioned rather than being in a production pipeline. And if you're commissioned, you kind of like sometimes whoever's commissioning you might might say, like, I need this done by this date. And then you have to have it done by that day, preferably. But most of the time it's like you're kind of at that artist's whim. Um. And it, it just depends on like what work they have going on and such too. It, it it's all really flexible. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, on one hand, like some people like to work and rework and rework what they do endlessly. But I mean, the nice thing is, you said before, you don't get too attached to what you draw, so you're always moving forward onto the next thing, onto the next thing. That you're not really that anxious about, you know, what it is you do. Like you draw it, and it's there, and people are there to decide whether they like it yeah. or not. Yeah, I mean it's it's all a matter of like who I'm catering to as well. Like if I if I'm just getting this out for myself and for friends casually, like the sketches, then I'll leave it as a sketch and I don't care and that's it. I'll leave it there. But if I want to push it out to the podcast or like if I'm deliberately trying to get the attention of like more of the community or a, a bigger audience in general, then I will make sure it's more refined and um, something that people generally like to see, which is like a fully colored image. Um, and honestly, I hate finishing pictures. I know that sounds kind of weird, but uh, they just lack life to me. I love sketches because they have all this raw information in them. There's more um, energy in them too, I think. Yeah, exactly. And you, to me, it's kind of cool because you get to see the artist's thought process in it. You, you could be like, oh, they made a mistake there or they erased that or they, just, they were going to go this way, but they decided to go this way with it. That part of the process is more full of life and interesting to me than a finished product. I think finished drawings are very sterile and annoying and uninteresting, but uh, sometimes they turn out pretty cool. I That's one of the reasons is, I, like, I used to not finish a lot of my drawings. I used to leave them, like, at most just line work, uh, but I, I would get, like, encouragement and prompts from people to actually start finishing my drawings and, like, do it quickly. Um, and so what I try to do now is I do try to keep most of them colored, but at the same time maintain that sort of liveliness in the line work somehow. And it's, it takes a lot of work. Um, some days the lines jive with me and some days they just look like crap and I just have to let it be that way. Sure. Would you ever consider like collaborating with another artist, something where you do the line work and maybe they do like inks or colors or something like that? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's for me, it's always a matter of what time I have available compared to like what other priorities I have going on. But yeah, like I've done it before where I've tossed out line work and I'm like, okay, whoever wants to color this in, go. Um, I haven't done a collaborative project since college, but I think. If I had a, a, like for me personally, I would have to have like a, some sort of base relationship with the other artist. Like, sure. I'm not, if some random stranger comes up to me being like, hey, you want to collaborate? I'm going to be like, no. <laughs> Does anybody actually do that? Like, hey, I'm off the street. Hey. <laughs> They're scratching their arms like, you want to collaborate? I really need some money. <laughs> <laughs> you have to stop like the, Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the premise of a strong bread like crank call. It's like, hi, I'm Dirk Nobody, and I'd like to collaborate with you. I don't know. Yeah. You want to make some art? <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, now that I would, I would commission that. I would actually want you to draw somebody who would come up to you and be like a collaborator and like, <laughs> who wants to art? Something like that. I don't know. I thought you meant like, co- like commission someone to get hyped on crack and then go on the street and be like, you want to collaborate? <laughs> the coked up art fiend. <laughs> yeah, like please go do this. Here I have some cocaine. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, earlier there was a little little bit of a Twitter thing where people were writing stuff that they needed to get on their hands. Oh my god! I nearly <laughs> wrote Coke on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, coked up roadblock. I I, I think I would. Commission. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, uh, real talk Wait. for a second. One Martha Marin warned me off Coke once. What? It's just like don't do don't do it. I'm like, oh, okay, good to know. Okay, I I should I should say it was real. T- this is real talk because it was actually like genuine advice she was giving. But it's not like we were in a position to actually get cocaine. It's not like lines were laid out and I and my <laughs> head was heading down and she's like, no roadblock, don't do it. Yeah, no, that that was not the situation at all. I think we. I think we yeah, were just the- talking and she was just kind of speaking broadly, like, just stay away from cocaine. Oh, my God. Yeah, because I was like, I was imagining this scenario where you're like, I don't know, man, maybe I should just try coke. And she's like, no, from personal experience, you don't want to do that. Or she'd like smack like the, the pipe or whatever out, off your nose, out of your hand, <laughs> and then she'd hit you. And then she'd be like, no, no. <laughs> she would and take got- the rolled up 20 and like hit my nose yeah. with it. And then you would go steal firewood because that's what Martha Marin does. Oh, my God. (laughs) Well. That almost happened. Yeah. (laughs) No, but uh, instead of Coke, you got boobs, which is good. That's even better. uh, Boobs is nice, clean fun. (laughs) Yeah, they are. Blink, blink. You can speak from firsthand experience. So we learned our lesson. We've been up this for years. You never lead with Coke. You work your way up towards it across the, the span of an hour. This is what podcast veterans do. Yes. <laughs> Glad I could help. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, the first Coke reference in our show in, what, a year, Jonathan? It's been a long time. Oh. We generally don't talk. There's a lot of shit we do talk about. Drugs is generally not one of them. Drugs are bad, children. Don't do drugs. I blame Jonathan. Yeah. You started it. I did, I, and, I, and I apologize. I apologize taking a stare. I can hear the angry emails. My child started doing drugs because of Glib Shark. That's a t-shirt She's I such buy. such a horrible influence on my 10-year-old child who listens to your... Why the hell is your 10-year-old <laughs> listening to us? Look, go if watch you would... Game Kids or something. I don't know. If... Go. Is Dora the Explorer still around? Go watch that. Oh my God. If you had just gotten them chocolate milk like you wanted, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Chocolate milk reference. Hello, 2009. Was that a 2009 reference? It might have been what? older, actually. I don't oh. know. Like, uh, so basically, there was that video where uh, uh, some guy's playing online with this really annoying kid, and he has like he's recording the, uh, the the chat on Xbox Live or whatever. And there's this one kid who keeps screaming at his mom to bring him chocolate milk, and he's like 13 or something. Wow. Yeah. I'd be like, you're 13. Go fend for yourself. Exactly. I, I will never have kids. I I freaking hate people. I love you guys. I hate people. And I hate kids. And won't. Sorry. A great song. Short people have no reason to, to live. <laughs> Ouch. Well, I, I took us both down with that. Look at it this way. I mean, the the person you by far spend the most time with, noobs, is, is exceptional. Because he is that person that you can stand for an extended period of time. Maybe right. not all the time, but an extended period of time. So and you already have a childlike person in your life. Ex- well, yes. yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> what is enough? <laughs> and the rest of us, I mean, you deal with in video games and, and online and stuff. So we, we're, we never cross that median of, hey, we're good enough in-person friends to where I can annoy you. I if suppose, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, you and Connor giggle over chess. I, okay, maybe, yeah. but. Yeah. <laughs> chess, how that to my list. You giggle over a lot of things, actually. Yeah. I told Jonathan the other day that whenever I see his face, I hear babies giggling. Because <laughs> he has that, like, little kid grin. He's like, you see a picture of Jonathan grinning, and you can't help but hear, like, a ooh in the back. Oh, it's God. like. 
with gleeful abandon. Like, I'm afraid yeah. that something is broken somewhere, the way he's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> His mind's broken. That's <laughs> I can't argue um, with that. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, but yeah, this is such an amazing, like, body of work. I mean, I'd be very surprised. Have you ever considered doing any kind of, like, animation, like, on a YouTube level or anything like that? Um, no, <laughs> because I, I, like, know myself really well by now because when, like, my first year of college, I studied animation, and by the end of it, I knew that I didn't want to do animation because I simply don't have the patience for it. Um, it... It takes a lot of time to punch out a single scene, depending on what's going on in it, in, in animation. And um, I just don't have the patience. I am super squirmy. I am go, go, go. Um, so I think the closest I would ever get to doing something like an animation would be like a storyboard-esque animatic, where I would probably take like a series of comic panels and then put them in succession to like make make an animation i guess does that make sense it'd be like an animated comic so yeah sort of like a motion comic a little yeah bit. yeah something like that i think i can see myself doing that down down the road but right now I, I i have enough trouble as it is balancing like job life regular life and then like making sure i punch out drawings pretty regularly so down the road maybe there you go. The door's not completely closed, just mostly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm not an animator. <laughs> but you were an exceptional, like, draw artist, and uh, we love your work, and we loved, like, talking to you. Oh, thank you. It's been a blast talking about it. It's really fun. I'm super passionate about it. Yeah. Probably should have transitioned before I asked you what's next. That's okay. Is there something next? I meant, like, in terms of anything you have lined up and exciting that you want to share and divulge with us. Oh, no, I think I'm um, uh, probably just going to dabble a little bit in, like, the T-shirt designing realm. Um, got, like, a taste of that doing the RT podcast shirt and getting a lot of encouragement from other people to uh, keep researching designs and keep practicing there. So I think my my jam is going to be RT podcast sketches, Drunk Crucible, with a side of whatever else I want to do, and then practicing shirt designs doing some research there so yeah That's, nothing nothing and, dramatic and, and also and we're going to speak very vaguely here uh doing people other people's solids doing them big favors and and really knocking out of the park and <laughs> allowing them to do to 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 do things for other people that may or may not have been delivered to their door accidentally this week um and and we'll we'll keep it nice and vague but lauren knows exactly what i'm talking yeah. about yeah oh man more I on that later kids. <laughs> okay that's okay kids at least we know that lauren caught the t-shirt fever she's tasted blood in the t-shirt ocean and she wants more yes no one is safe <laughs> oh man you can find lauren at lauren i gotta make sure i spell this right Oh, man. That's okay. Twi- yeah, go ahead. Pimp your Twitter. Pimp your uh, your Tumblrs and such. It's uh, my – I'll just – because I'm not in the chat, obviously. I'll just say it. It's My Twitter is at Lauren, L-A-U-R-I-N-A, Crozier, C-R-O-Z-I-E-R. And then my uh, website is simply uh, laurenac.com. I'm also on the Rooster Teeth site as Lauren with an I. Super easy to find, and I hope you guys do. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us on the Glib Shark. Thank you Thanks, so much Lauren. for having me. Hey, Jonathan, any uh, suddenly chum this week, or are we gonna try that out later on? Uh, I think suddenly chum will be the people who invented it. Uh, three of our friends of the show who are out in Curacao right now, diving the and uh, and not dying apparently after nine dives, but maybe dying of alcohol poisoning. Because Nathan decided to try and drink five shots of horrible rum all at once once to kill the bottle. Why he would do that, I have no idea. But congratulations to Izzy, Connor, and Nathan. You guys are the very first Sunly Chum. Hooray! Yay! 
<laughs> also, you guys are jerks. Yeah. Hooray! Get back home and be pasty gamers with us. Have no life <laughs> with us. You got too much sun. Yeah. Now we don't like you no more. Stop having fun, yeah. you assholes. <laughs> Stop tanning. Know. People in melanin houses should not throw stones. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> brown power. <laughs> hey, brown power. Hey, Jonathan, who do we have on next week? Uh, we're going to try and get BoJack Horseman. I'm kidding. Yes! No, we're not oh. going to get. Uh, real quick, though, I have been watching that show. Um, one of the things I'm getting ready to go to right now is, uh, is head off to the gym. Um, because of cruising and other things, this that are happening this summer i've decided to beat the rush and get my fitness in uh, in gear now so i'm trying as best as i can to do two a days uh to to get back on that horse so uh so i've been watching bojack horseman on the treadmill and uh oh my god nice Jeez. well done well no. done, fellow. You caught it. You I, you you caught yourself the worst is when almost. uh sarah what was it sarah Sarah Lee? Sarah May? Nobody does it like Sarah Lee. Who are you no, thinking no, no. about? The, 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 the character that was on Bojack's old 90s show that grew up to be a train wreck. Sarah Lynn. Sarah Lynn. Yeah. It is so fucking weird hearing Sarah Lynn say those things because it's the same voice as Louise from Bob's Burgers. Yeah, but she's also on a bunch of other stuff. She's also on Gravity Falls. I don't care. Those are the two things I know her from. And it, it's oh. hearing her... <laughs> hearing and Flight her, of the Concords. Like, yeah, it was weird. But anyway, well, it's, it's been an awesome show. I, I really liked it. The Patton Oswalt, uh, Neil McBeal, the Navy SEAL, was fantastic. <laughs> he has a bunch of roles in that. He's also yeah. the, uh, the Penguin publisher. Yeah. Oh uh, good stuff. Can't, can't recommend it more. But uh, back to your question. I have no idea. I have an idea for... Or I have no idea, like solidly but uh i do have a notion that uh that may involve some of the uh recently promoted mods coming on there you go i i know i i, ha- I have an in with w- at least one of them lauren lauren wink wink lauren oh, you think oh, you can okay. get me in okay. touch with one of those one of them new mods uh yes i think i can <laughs> okay cool and uh and we'll we'll see who all we can get on kind of talk to them about the first fortnight on the job and uh and what kind of got them there and, and stuff like that. But I think that'd be interesting to see because because uh, you're a mod. I'm an admin and and have and welcoming the new kids, I think, would be kind of cool. Absolutely. Just a little bit of friendly hazing just to between yeah. friends. Just a little bit. You <laughs> Until next week, though, you can follow us on Twitter at GlibShark and uh, websites GlibShark.com. Of course, if you're listening to this, you already know that. And uh, you can follow us individually at Jack Edithil and at Road underscore Block and at Hobo Crazy. But uh, but until next week, on behalf of Lauren or Ur- Urban, we can say her name now. The show's over. <laughs> and uh, Jonathan Cerna and the entire Gloom Shark staff. This is Jack Edithil saying good night, good health, and stay sharky, my friends. Doodles, Black. That's all for this week's episode of Glib Shark. But you can find more swimming around the internet. Go fishing for us on iTunes. We're a five star catch. Or follow us on Twitter at Glib Shark. You can even drop us a line glibshark at gmail.com. Until next week, stay sharky, my friends. <laughs>